Welcome to the Backgammon Christmas Calendar. 24 points of Christmas. The 17 point by Grandmaster Mark Olsen. What's up Backgammon fans? Today is the 17th of December and in this video we're gonna talk about the 17 point. So let's have a look at the board. The 17 point it's over here. That's your 17 point. So you are playing as orange, I'm playing as purple. So your 17 point is my 8 point. It's difficult to talk much about the 17 point because we rarely get to own the 17 point. It's the enemy that owns your 17 point because it's the enemy's 8 point. In the opening position, your opponent begins with three checkers on the 17 point, therefore it's difficult and rare that you actually get to own this point. However, there is a lot of strategy involved with how your opponent's checkers are placed here on your 17 point or your opponent's 8 point. So there's a couple of strategy tips that I want to share with you guys in this video. The first strategy tip is every time that you're, you're considering a back checker constellation over here. So you're trying to figure out maybe you have an ace to play from this position here and you have to figure out how do I place my back checkers in the best possible way. If you play 24 to 23, that's a very, that, that's a, uh, that's not just a neutral ace, that's actually a worse ace. It, it, it's not a good pip to play. You're better off having this rear checker all the way back. So you have one man split a little bit further and one man all the way back. And the reason is when you come here to the 23 point, you get into direct range of your opponent's eight point. Which means that for instance, six four is gonna point on your head and double sixes becomes a strong blitz attack. Double four is also a little bit uh, nasty usually, but uh, th there's just no reason for your rear checker to step into the range of these checkers here. It's much better to be all the way back because then they don't touch. There's no, no connection with these checkers and you're not gonna get blitzed here on the, on the deuce point or on the 23 point. So that's the first stretch tip. Hey guys, remember to download and play on the Backgammon Galaxy app. Second strategy tip is, well now we're gonna talk again about your back checkers and uh, your propensity to split your back checkers, whether you stay on an anchor or you split them. And a very important variable here is whether your opponent has spare checkers on the eight point. Because if your opponent has a stripped eight point, like in this position, I have a stripped eight point. You're much more inclined, you have a greater incentive to split your back checkers because it's not that dangerous to split them. If I want to hit with a three, I have to break my eight point and leave blocks all over the place. If I have a spare checker on the eight point, well, depending on the position, you might still want to split, but it's a lot less attractive to split your back checkers now because now I have this spare checker that I can use as an attacker and I don't have to give up my eight point. So the second strategy tip is, if your opponent has a stripped eight point, you're much more inclined to split your back checkers. Third strategy tip, that's kind of like a, a more general version of this is, every time we have a decision of whether to split the back checkers or not, the most key feature to look at on the board is whether your opponent has a prime formation or a blitz formation. This is something Super Grandmaster Mochi talks about in the new book Masterclass. So let's say we have, uh, let's say I have a priming formation, something like this. This is definitely a priming formation because it's a pure prime structure. I don't have any deep points made. I don't have any stacks. I don't have much ammunition. I only have nine checkers here in the zone, which is my side of the board. So this is definitely a priming formation. So in this, against this front position here, you as orange needs to split your back checkers. You need to get going and try to either escape one of your back checkers or get an anchor at the edge of the prime to prevent me from further advancing my prime. If you're facing a blitz formation, it's the other way around. So what is a blitz formation? Well, a blitz formation 
is when you have deep points made, you have a lot of men in the zone, you already emptied out your builder supply from the midpoint because you already advanced too many checkers. You, now it's difficult to fill out the gaps in your prime. You have, you're too advanced in your front position. You have a lot of men in the zone. This is not good for building a prime, but it's great for a blitz attack. So here, for instance, I have 10 in the zone. This is a case where you don't want to split. So let's say you roll a 3-2 here. It's a little bit of a weird position. Let's just take a real position. Let's say you roll a 4-2 a, a opening. I roll double 5, so I'm going to make this play because it's the only play I can make, double 5. You will roll a 3-2. 2 and 3. What's the best play here? It's definitely not to split the back checkers because I have a prime formation. Now you're playing into my hand. Now you can you, you risk getting this attacked here. It's much better to stay on your anger and just go for building a pure prime yourself. This is the play. A safe player here might play 13 to 8. That's actually better than splitting, but it's not the best way to play your checkers. It's much better to take a small risk, diversify your builders, get a good builder distribution, great flexibility, and next time you can fill out gaps in your prime. So this was the video of today, the 17th of December, and we talked about the 17 point. Hope you liked it, and we will see you again tomorrow. Merry Christmas, backgammon fans!